1973 until his death in 1994. Um, I initially went to school for accounting, uh, have an accounting background, um, started working at the age of 12, uh, met a lot of people when I was working, um, kind of built my ties um, to, to serve the community just of how my parents are, and that's what I like to do. Uh, went to school for accounting, worked at uh, University of Minnesota as a research director, uh, went down to Iowa State University, became a research director there after University of Minnesota and did a research project in the entire state of Minnesota on drug and alcohol intervention prevention with uh, youth. After that, um, I worked for Lake States Construction as a business manager. Um, Moved on to Yulin Brothers Incorporated out of Cloquet. I uh, was a business manager for them for, for a while. And I got tired of the accounting. I did a career change. My mother told me that she did not want me going into law enforcement. So I went into firefighting and paramedic. And I did that for, I've been, that's 11 years now. Um, so I avoided that uh, law enforcement for a time being. And then I got a hitch. I went to school. Uh, to the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Artesia, New Mexico, and I kind of went in the footsteps of my dad and became a law enforcement officer for five years. Uh, it was a very enjoyable time. Had an incident, a uh, life altering inc incident that happened, and decided to change venues. I also had a health issue that came up. I got blastomycosis, normally what dogs get. So I was out of work for um, almost 18 months. During that time, after recuperating from that, our family was struggling, and at one point, me and my wife had seven jobs between us to support our five kids, and our family of seven. And I know what it's like to look for a livable wage job with benefits, and it's pretty hard up in these areas, especially with the economy the last few years. That's one of the issues that I'm running for, is, is to look at ways we can bring businesses here that provide livable wages, possibly with benefits, I have a lot of friends, I have a lot of family that have moved away from here. Um, and I like to work for the people and I like to look at solutions. Um, I also serve on the Lake Country Power Board of Directors. I got elected in last year, uh, 2009. I ran on the issues of where is our money. We keep having uh, rate uh, increases and where are those rate increases going? So those are the issues that got me onto the Lake Country Power Board, and I, I, it's been a big learning curve, you know, learning the co-op world and how they do business there. And one of the things that I constantly fight for is is for the rate payers. Um, we can't raise rates every time we have a problem with our budget. We need to look at ways we can cut waste, cut expenses, but also save the positions that we do have and honor the contracts. Last year we had a, or this year we had an incident where we had 1.2 million excess in margin. Um, we also had a point where our pensions were underfunded by $1 million. We decided to fund those pensions with that margin, excess margin. And currently right now we have a group of uh, like country power members that are sending a petition around um, and to get Lake Country Power regulated by the PUC. Um, I'm on the record stating that I'd rather fund pensions than, than give the money back in capital credits because that's a contract that we have with the employees and we need to honor that. And if we have the extra money to do it, we need to honor those. So those are some of the issues that, that I look at. Um, so it's been a good year. I got elected as treasurer of Lake Country Power. I definitely keep my fellow board members on their toes. I ask questions. The district I represent, 30% of the people in my district of Lake Country Power are below the poverty line. So if there's an increase, anywhere from like $2 to to $20 is a, is a big burden to them. Um, they're on a fixed income. A lot of them are pulling in five, $600 a month. You know, when you add a, a rate increase, they budget their money pretty well. It's amazing to see how some of these people actually live. So I always have those people in the back of my mind. Um, when I, I sit on several different boards, um, I sat on the Boys and Girls Club Advisory Board for, for uh, eight years. Um, we started it out from a little uh, tiny building 
use the part of a building. We were able to move over to a huge gym, and then we have the current facility down in Lake Vermilion that was uh, 1.3 million to construct. Um, and it was just a great process to work and getting, it took us almost eight years to get that building up to where, we, where, where we're, at, we're sitting. So I know what it's like for grassroots efforts. I know what it's like to raise money. I know what it's like to look for money. Um, and those are the issues as I, I work for a lot of issues of youth and our elders. Um, I also served on the bo uh, board of directors for Fortune Bay River Casino from 1999 to 2003. I was on that board of directors with Gary Gotchnik. And at that time we created, um, me and Joanne Donald, board members, had a lot of issues about our elders, especially our elders on our reservation. We created an elder needs <coughs> program to help them, like what, when our freezer or fridge went out, uh, we, we found ways to create a fund to support the elders in their time of need. And a lot of the elders are on fixed income. Um, so those are, those are what I like to do is help people. And it's, it's a broad range of people that I like to help. What I currently do now is I, I work with uh, County Attorney Melanie Ford on her uh, JDAI, Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative. And one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the racial disparities within our juvenile justice system, but at the same time, saving the taxpayers money. Um, I know we can get into to numbers and stuff like that, but the biggest thing is, is, is to make sure there's equality in our system. And that's working with law enforcement, the judicial system, <laughs> oh, okay, and uh, um, social services, and getting everybody on board. But I definitely would like to earn your vote, earn your support. Um, I have strong family ties up here. Um, my great grandparents lived up here. Bessie Masabi um, lived out um, in Winton. I have family living on Basswood uh, Lake, Burnside Lake. My mom's a Burnside. Um, that's where her mother is from up here. So we have a lot lifelong ties up here, and um, I like to represent everybody in the community. And I keep my phone in the phone book. You can contact me on email, Facebook, whatever. I'm there. I'm easy to talk to, and I'm willing to listen to everybody's concerns. Great, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, last but not least, and. Uh, Sorry, you haven't been able to finish no, the salad. No, I know. It, it's a big salad. That is a big salad here. <laughs> All I can think about is I'm wearing a white shirt and don't let the salsa spill on my shirt. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes oh, when you wear yeah. something white? Yeah. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll turn it over to Christina okay. for the next 10 minutes. Hi, I'm Christina Huyanen. I am from the, um, I went to school in Babbitt. Then I moved to Tower. I graduated from Tower. I've always been very involved in the communities um, from, from growing up, being involved in all the, the sports and the activities and such. I went to school at Bemidji State University. Um, I started out going in there for education and coaching and then switched over to, to a business in finance. And I then went to work for Ford Motor Company. I worked for Ford Motor Company in Eden Prairie um, for a number of years. I got transferred to um, Orange County, California. I worked there for a number of years and then I got transferred back to Minneapolis. Um, during that time, I worked everything from customer service to um, being an analyst where if someone would go into a, any Ford Lincoln Mercury dealership and apply for a loan, we would take a look at it and we would be the ones who would either approve or deny your loan. And went from there to um, actually working with the dealerships, doing a floor plan, um, checking to see um, if we could raise their allowance to have more vehicles. We'd have to look at their books and such. Um, and then um, I uh, decided that I wanted to take some time off. They wanted to transfer me to Chicago, and at that time I, I didn't want to move. In order to keep moving up in the company, you had to keep relocating whenever they moved you. So I took a year off, and I went and actually did management training at a dealership where I did used car, new car. I bought and sold cars for the, uh, for the dealership. Um, um, it was fun to get back into the, uh, 
into doing the buying and selling because when I was at Ford at one time, 